Here's another example of an SN1 reaction that occurs with rearrangement. So see if you can draw the product of this reaction. So work on it by yourself. Press pause when you're ready to go. Press play and we'll go through it. Okay, so here is the product of this reaction. This is what it should look like. CH3 here and CH3 here and CH3 and you should have an OH. Of course, it doesn't matter whether your OH is here, here, or here. Um, there is, as long as you have two CH3s and one OH coming off that you've drawn the right thing. Okay, so this is an example of an SN1 reaction that occurs with rearrangement. So what is happening in this reaction? Probably the first thing that throws students for a loop, if you got thrown for a loop by this question, is this silver, AG. What does this do? Well, AG, silver, silver plus, is a Lewis acid. And it's very, you know, well, that's a shortcut. We'll just say exactly what it's good at doing. It's very good at forming carbocations from alkyl halides. So if you see silver plus in a reaction with an, with an alkyl halide, chances are that it's going to be abstracting or helping to remove this chloride so that you're gonna form a carbocation. So that's a little clue. If you've never seen that before, um, a clue for, uh, if you see that, you can expect to see a carbocation formation. So how does this actually operate? Well, you can draw it two different ways. I'm gonna draw it this way. I'm gonna show the, the chloride donating its pair of electrons to the silver, and this would lead to the formation of this product here, CH3, 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 and we have chlorine here, Cl, lone pair, lone pair, to our silver, Ag. And because chlorine's going, it's losing a lone pair, it's going from owning to sharing, it's gonna have a positive charge. And this is the first step. You can think of it like adding as a Lewis base to our Lewis acid. Okay. Now remember the SN1, what's the key step in the SN1 reaction? The leaving group leaves, right? So this is actually gonna make chlorine a better leaving group. It's actually a better leaving group than it normally would be. Not that Cl minus is a bad leaving group by any stretch, but remember this is a secondary carbon here, so this is going to help things along. And getting to that product, CH3, 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 um, well, it doesn't hurt. Let's draw in the, the missing or hidden or implicit hydrogen, however you want to call it. Remember that this is going to be, when we're thinking about form, when we formed a carbocation, you always want to ask what type of carbocation have we formed here? So this is a carbocation. Um, actually, we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves here. First of all, let's just mention that, remember that you may have learned this in general chemistry. The reason why silver is so good at forming carbocations is because when we form silver halides, they're extremely insoluble in water. So it precipitates out of solution and brings the chlorine out of solution, which means that carbocation formation is irreversible. So once the silver adds the chlorine, the chlorine leaves, it's not coming back. It's irreversible. So we're forming a new carbocation. It's just also on a one-way ticket here. So forming our carbocation, you notice that there's two carbons attached to it, so it's a secondary carbocation. And the next question to ask is, is it gonna rearrange? So will this rearrange? And you can understand that probably wouldn't be asking this question, doing this problem if it, if it wasn't, because uh, we're talking about SN1 rearrangement. So let's have a look at each of the neighbors of this carbon. And sometimes you can call this the alpha carbon. You'll see this called the beta carbon, the carbon next door. So if we look at the carbon, this carbon next door, which you know we could call carbon Three. This is not IUPAC numbering, just keeping track of stuff numbering. Um, shouldn't actually be carbon two, 
this should be actually carbon four, but um, this is a secondary secondary carbon, which means if you remember from previous examples, we could migrate a hydride, and the hydride would give us a secondary carbocation. And remembering the order of carbocation stability goes tertiary is better than secondary, which is better than primary, much better than primary. So we'd be going from secondary to secondary here. So secondary to secondary, that's not favored. There's no strong driving force for that rearrangement. So it's unlikely, um, unlikely that we would see a rearrangement occur here. On the other hand, if you look at the other neighbor of this carbon, this other beta carbon, this carbon, carbon four, is attached to one, two, three, four carbon. So this makes it quaternary. And this means that it could break, not a hydrogen, because there's no hydrogens to move. If we had a hydrogen, we'd move it before carbon, but we don't have any hydrogens. We could migrate an alkyl group. And if it did so, it would give us a tertiary carbocation. So tertiary is a better type of carbocation than secondary, more stable. So this could happen. So this rearrangement could happen so let's think about what that would look like if we were gonna do a rearrangement here. So drawing this out, let's just draw it with the arrows. Imagine you have a pair of electrons between carbon four and carbon seven. I'm doing carbon seven here because it's uh, closest. And you take a pair of electrons between carbon four and carbon seven, and you can show the movement of this pair of electrons from carbon four to carbon three Okay, and what would that look like? Let's let's draw that out. Maybe let's give ourselves a little bit more more room here. Okay, so um, let's draw this out here. Do do do. CH three, CH three, another CH three, and again we said that we had a lone pair of electrons here. Two electrons and positive charge and hydrogen. Okay, and what does this look like? Lone pair to carbocation. So we're gonna break our carbon-carbon bond here. We're gonna form a carbon-carbon bond here. So like I said, sometimes it helps to draw everything out, including the arrow, and then just to sort of do it, just draw out everything without making it look pretty, just making sure that you're getting the bonds formed and bonds broken right. Now, because we're going from lacking uh, electrons on this carbon to sharing with this carbon, now we have, this goes from positive to neutral. Carbon four is gonna go from neutral to positively charged. From neutral to positively charged. So this is gonna become a new carbocation. And note here that this new carbocation is a tertiary carbocation, just like we said, um, it's a tertiary carbocation and it's going to be favored. The driving force here is tertiary is more stable than secondary. So this is a favorable alkyl shift. So yeah, this is a this is an alkyl shift. And so maybe we can redraw this a little bit. Let's let's just do some modifications, make it look a little prettier. So CH3 and, you know, we can draw in the hydrogen. It certainly doesn't hurt. Draw the hydrogen in there. And uh, we also now in solution have a molecule of water. And it's this molecule of water, which uh, let's draw it in a different color. Now that we have this tertiary carbocation, it's fairly stable. It's not going to undergo any further rearrangement. So if we have water in solution, water can act as a nucleophile and it's going to attack our carbocation to give us, uh, to form a carbon to oxygen bond here. And uh, let's draw this out. We need to get a little bit more space here. Okay, and so that's going to go, let's draw this up here. Do, 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 CH3 and CH3, actually let's draw it out a little bit. CH3, CH3, and um, we'll have 
this being OH2. Now it's going from having two lone pairs to one, so it's going to be positively charged. And finally, the last step would just be deprotonation. So you'd lose a proton from this. And we could show this in a number of different ways. Uh, probably the best would just be to show another molecule of water coming and taking a proton away here. So here comes a green molecule of water. And it's going to take the lone pair here. I take the hydrogen, I'm sorry. And that gives us lone pair. Okay, so that's how this reaction happens. It's four steps, um, five actually, but um, there's the acid base step, then there's loss of the leaving group. Um, sort of step one is acid base. Loss of leaving group is step two. Three is our alkyl shift. Four is attack of water and step five here is deprotonation but just like every other rearrangement we've talked about the key step here is the rearrangement where we're going from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation in this case it's going through an alkyl shift so that's another example of an SN1 reaction with rearrangement. And another thing, just watch out for silver because silver is very uh, useful for formation of carbocations from alkyl halides. So if you see that, think carbocation.